Good evening. How y'all doing this evening? Can you see me okay? <laughs> wow. First of all, uh, Terry, thank you for introducing me here. And, uh, I am tremendously honored to be here tonight. I've enjoyed meeting everybody. If I haven't met you yet, uh, I apologize, but I look forward to meeting you, at least shaking your hands. You'll notice on the, uh, your chairs there was a picture that uh, Terry wanted to be sure and, and have everyone have. I'm honored that he wanted to do this. Uh, compliments of uh, DuPont Wealth Management. Uh, a photo of, of me when I had hair uh, <laughs> playing against uh, Purdue. And those of you who don't know, yes, I did make that shot. And yes, we beat, beat Purdue. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> In fact, if my memory serves me correct, uh, during the four years that uh, we played Purdue, uh, I think we'd beat them all eight times. But uh, any Purdue fans in here? Yes. Well, well I, I'm wearing Purdue colors. I did that for a reason, for you Purdue fans, because I wanted you to know what I would look like if I'd have been in black and gold. <laughs> no. You know, Purdue's a, a, a great, uh, great institution, and uh, we're so blessed here in Indiana to have so many great uh, educational institutions. And uh, and uh, I chose to uh, go to Indiana for for many reasons, but I will say this: that when I was was visiting all the schools, I made sure that I went to to all the the gymnasiums that we would be playing in, because I have family and friends that wanted to watch me play. And so, uh, when I visited Purdue, and some of my best friends are, are from Purdue, and I still have, uh, we still stay in touch and, and do a lot of things together, but I made sure I sat in a lot of different seats and everything to make sure that my family and friends were going to be able to see me play. And how many of y'all have ever been to Mackey Arena? I know you have, all right? Isn't it the greatest place in the world to play a game of basketball? Absolutely the greatest. And, and you, there's not a bad seat in the house, really. And as a player, I enjoyed playing there because it's got a great floor and all. But the, there's not a bad seat in the house. And the reason why is they don't have any national championship banners to play. <laughs> now, how many Purdue fans do we have in here? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let me just say this, uh, I, I, uh, I'm really honored and humbled uh, by my experience here tonight. You all have honored me with uh, having photos, and asking me to sign the autographs uh, for yourselves or your children. And uh, please know that uh, I appreciate uh, that. You, you, do, uh, you do honor and humble me, and I'm very honored and humbled to be here tonight. And what I heard Josette say here is very impressive in, in the sense that what was happening with each and every one of you who are involved here tonight in some way, shape, or form, you bigs as well as uh, you supporters, Jason had an opportunity through this organization to make memories. And that's what's been happening with every little boy and little girl little sister, little brother, and that's making memories for them. And I could tell that Jason has experienced those and will carry them not only for his lifetime, will pass them on to, to his children. And Jason, I'm so happy for you and I know Bob and Peggy for what you all have done for, for them. And uh, so congratulations and, and continued success in, in, in those endeavors. You know, uh, I like to let people know where I come from, and that's not Newcastle, Indiana, okay, <laughs> but where I really come from. And the best way to do that is to share with you my life slogan, and uh, my life slogan is this, what I am is God's gift to me, and what I make of myself is my gift back to God. And you know, um, I look at this organization and I see tremendous things coming about that will allow kids to to experience what 
other kids may not have an opportunity to. And the more big brothers and big sisters that we can have throughout this great country, with all the troubles and trials and situations that we have, it's so important to lay that foundation. And these kids, these kids are our future. And it's important because we have a very awesome, awesome responsibility to be a tremendous example for them. And it reminds me of a scripture in the Bible that is referencing being a good Christian example. And it's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 6 through 16, which talks about being a good Christian example, about the way we walk, the way we talk, how we, how we conduct ourselves in, in public, how we, how we express our, our love for not only each other, but for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know, when, when you look at all the things that are going on today, the responsibility that we have as adults to leave a legacy and leave and to make memories, I see Big Brothers Big Sisters organization doing just that. And I want to commend and congratulate you and thank you for all you're doing to make that happen. And you know, it, it takes every one of us in some way, shape, or form to be able to, to provide whatever means there may be, whether it be financial or the, the time or the energy and the effort. And it's an awesome responsibility. And I, and I look back on the time that I was growing up. And I had, I had a great upbringing. I had a great family I was involved with. But you know what? I had big brothers and big sisters, too. I just didn't know it. It wasn't an official organization for me. But I had it with uh, my, my teachers in high school that took an interest in me, not just as an athlete, but as a person. I had coaches who took an interest in me, not just as an athlete, but as a person. They were concerned and wanted to help me be the very best that I could possibly be. Now, I'm sure that each and every one of you want your children and the children that you're associated with to be the very best that they can possibly. Where are you going? <laughs> I didn't do that to you, Terry. Come on. Some friend he is, huh? <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, what the the I got to start all over. <laughs> no, anyway. So uh, the awesome responsibility we have by affecting people's lives. And I had people, coaches, teachers, people that had an interest in me, not just as an athlete, but as a person. And I know you want that for your children as well, and the, and the children that lives that you're touching here with this organization, the Big Brothers and Big Sisters. And you know, <clears throat> when you think about it, uh, it's, it's a wonderful situation to be in because they want it for you more than you want it for yourself. And I'm sure that each and every one of you feel that way. But you know, there comes a time that with that awesome responsibility, we have to, to realize that we're setting that example. And I'm going to read to you here something that, that really got my attention the first time I stepped into uh, the Indiana University basketball uh, locker room. I was a sophomore in high excuse me, a junior in high school, and uh, I was named to the All-State uh, Herald Times uh, All-State team as a junior. And uh, while we were there, of course, it was very convenient for me to go to have an unofficial official visit to Indiana University basketball in Assembly Hall. And so, I'll never forget um, and, uh, an opportunity that I had to, to walk into the, the IU men's basketball locker room. And at the time, of course, Coach Knight was a coach, and uh, you walk in, and there on the wall was the Indiana image. It was framed and everything. So when I walked in, I wasn't just looking around at all the, you know, in awe of that. It caught my eye. It caught my attention so much so that I stopped and I read it. And how many of y'all ever had parents that uh, preached to you? <laughs> Anybody? If you don't raise your hand, you're lying. Okay, we've all had that. You ever had that situation where 
you've been preached to, and you, 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 you absolutely make a commitment to let it go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> How many besides me? And I know, again, if you're not raising your hand, you're lying. Okay. But then down the road, you find out that, oh my gosh, that's what mom and dad were talking about, or that's what my minister was talking about, or that's what my coach was talking about, or that's what my teacher was talking about. Y'all can relate? Okay. But I want to share with you here, I think it's very pertinent to the Big Brothers, Big Sisters program. It's called the Indiana Image. And it talks about being an example, but uh, if I can get through this, because it is so, it's so emotional because it puts even more emphasis on the responsibility that each and every one of us have of being an example. The Indiana Image. There are little eyes upon you, and they're watching night and day. There are little ears that quickly take in every word you say. There are little hands all eager to do anything you do, and a little person's, and a little person who's dreaming of the day they'll be like you. You're the little person's idol. You're the wisest of the wise. In their little mind about you, no suspicions ever rise. They believe in you devoutly, holds to all you say and do. They will say and do in your way when they're a grown-up like you. There's a wide-eyed little fellow who believes you're always right, and the little ears are always open, and they're watching day and night. You are setting an example every day in all you do for the little person who's waiting to grow up to be like you. And uh, I think that that uh, really says what the awesome responsibility that we have of being examples and making the memories for little brothers and little sisters. Not one person or not hundred people, not a thousand people can accomplish the things that need to be accomplished, not only here in Indiana, or not only here in this county, not only in the state of Indiana, or not even in the entire country. It's going to take a lot more. But listening to Josette and where she started and involvement, it's all about building a program, one step at a time, inch by inch, it's a sense. You know, you've heard that cliche. And it is so, so powerful, inch by inch, it's a cinch. It's about setting goals, identifying obstacles that will keep you from those dreams and goals. How many of y'all have goals? Okay. I mean, you don't have to raise your hand, but hopefully you do, and hopefully you have some written down. How many have written down the obstacles that are going to keep you from those dreams and goals? Anybody? Probably not, but you always heard it's important to write your dreams and goals down. Everybody heard that, right? Well, I think it's very important to identify obstacles that are going to keep you from your dreams and goals. And the reason being is, let me ask you this. How many of you all have ever been in pursuit of a dream or a goal? Never to reach it, besides me. Okay. And then down the road... <coughs> few months, a few years, all of a sudden it hits you. You're trying to figure out, you couldn't figure out what kept you from that dream and goal, why you didn't receive, uh, reach it. You became frustrated. And then all of a sudden it hits you and you realize, oh my gosh, that's what kept me from my dream and goal. Anybody know, realize that? One of the things that I think I, I've, I've learned that's really helped me is to identify a list of maybe 10 items, situations, obstacles that might keep me from my dreams and goals so that when those dreams